My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a hundred dollar credit on your next ad campaign. Go to LinkedIn.com slash campaign to claim your credit. That's LinkedIn.com slash campaign. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. Thank you. I couldn't have completed this project without a little extra coffee. And since I brush with Colgate's Pro Series toothpaste with an expert level whitening for a vibrant glow, I could show up to set each day camera ready and smiling wide. Well, Kelly, looks like a little Colgate gave you a lot of confidence. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. And welcome to Dice Roll, the greatest Pathfinder podcast on the planet, where it's a hair question like, if one of your toys came to life and became a poppet, which toy would it be? And what powers would your poppet have? Furby, killing people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question. Well, no, let's go through this. We're going to do this the right way. Every once in a while, under the magical word of Galarian, a toy comes to life and it becomes a person. We now have to give your... So obviously it's a puppet, but we now have to ask what class your Furby is. And which Furby? Because you've got a couple, right? Yeah. So actually, um, my Furby would be a... Um, I think they'd be multi-classed into Witch and Barbarian. Okay. Uh, and... Okay. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is, I think that... Uh, I think if I talk something like this... Oh my god. Uh, and I think that his name would be Volio Pia. Okay. I love the revisionism saying that Volio was a puppet the entire time. <laughs> Listen to me when I say this. Volio and Oddbody are supposed to look like the same person whenever Oddbody is in, like, human form, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. I'll give you that one. For me, um, because I, I don't know how much you guys know about this. I've probably talked about it ad nauseum at this point, but I have um what I like to call my wizard shelf. Um, and it's the bookshelf I keep most of my stuff on. I have a shelf entirely devoted to wizard memorabilia. Uh, I do have this magnificent little statuette of a wizard uh, throwing his hand into the air and uh, waving a stick. And I'm very fond of it. Um, I reckon his class... I think he's a fighter. Mm. <laughs> I think he's like... Go into he's that. One of, well, I think he's one of those... I think he's got a lot of pressure to live up to. <laughs> So yeah. I don't think he. I think he tried and failed to be a wizard, and he was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking start hitting people." And you know what? <laughs> to great effect. Ah. Well, what about the rest of you? Um, I think it would be my action figure of. I forgot his name. Zank. It would be my action figure of Zank, and he would, in fact, be <laughs> the Paladin the from the D and D movie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> It would, just, would be just be him. It would be so like a, to a Toy Story situation. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to ask you a <laughs> Toy Story thing where he believes oh, he's the real yeah. Zeng. <laughs> it, uh, it, and you know what? He just might be. I love this. I love this party of toys we have. We're absolutely no casters, no healing. Let's fucking hey, do this. Which yeah? multi? Which? Would, which multi class? True. True. Okay, you've got me there. Fuck you. <laughs> what about you, Lou? The Pikachu backpack that I have been holding on to since childhood that was previously my brother's. Oh my <laughs> okay. god, I, I love the that. exact one. So we can have a Pikachu in Galarian. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm I've into been, it. Okay. I've, been, yeah. I've been asking for this, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they've, they've got to be like a lightning kineticist, surely. Yes. Exclusively lightning-based magic only. I love that. Fuck yeah, that's really good. So we have <laughs> a proud party of... Um, a giant angry Furby, um, Zenk from the D&D movie, uh, a wizard who was not able to live up to expectations, and a beautiful backpack who has been around for many years and has the wisdom of a mountain. 
<laughs> you know what? And Pikachu shaped. And Pikachu shaped. You know what? I think they could be Belcora. <laughs> you really think that? I do! I think that these guys, you know, they'd have their ups and downs. At one point, the wizard that's not a wizard would betray the party. Um, but I think overall, they'd, they'd do pretty okay. I'm confident in this little party we've made. Now, hold on. Why would he do that? I mean, it's in, it's in his nature, right? Wizards are, by definition, duplicitous um, bastards who will put the study of magic over their friends. Are, hey. you, the, are you the writers of Dragon Age? <laughs> hey, fuck it. Shred uh, lightly. Yeah, I forgot what class your flavor is. Hey, bitch. <laughs> I was possessed by Jerick. <laughs> Good lord. Oh, dear. You're getting what? way too into character for my, for my personal I'm, comfort. I'm meta acting. Um, <laughs> Stop. Do uh, we want to play some fucking Pathfinder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Really yeah. bad. <laughs> Pack up. Pack it up. Okay. So... When we last left our adventurers in the Abomination Vaults, Silk, Ulric, and Fiore had returned to Otari to take what they hoped would be a period of rest before returning deeper into the dungeon in search of Jafaki. However, they found that there's no such thing as a peaceful day in the new Otari. After Silk uh, talked for a while with uh, Morlevent, Ulric found that Things were accelerating with Doriana's condition. Ulrich found that Doriana's hand had all but withered away, and that Doriana was finding herself more and more worried that her friend, Miss Motley, would do something drastic. Meanwhile, Fiore encountered Jeric Riverspell, a halfling wizard and Silk's ex, who was asking to find where Ulrich was so that he could talk to Ulrich and try to make him break up with Silk. All this culminated in the three of them spending the night in the Menhim's Manor, only to have a veritable haunted house experience when they found that Mayor Menhim's had been dominated to walk into Doriana's room at night, Ulrich and everyone else were put to sleep by sleep magic, someone wrote a warning on Ulrich's forehead saying, she's mine, and more and more atrocious things happening around the house culminating in you guys deciding that it would be wise for Doriana to spend the next while inside the Dawnflower Temple. They already went ahead, but just before you left, you were set upon by Zuzlarin, the Zebub servitor of the Abomination Vaults. Silk shot him to death, uh, almost, <laughs> and Zuzlarin very meekly delivered a message to you all. On behalf of the Fistophilus Berevian, a contract devil with an apparent offer to make to the party. So, uh, are we guys, are we good to, uh, gosh, we, you guys can't catch a break, huh? Whose fucking fault is that, Derry? Mm. Good lord. I mean, if we want to blame anyone, it's Belcora. The dreaded Who Belcora. Her? Who plays her? Hmm? Hmm? I didn't write the adventure. You guys are the one who wanted to play. I was like, let's play, uh, I don't know. Why don't we look at like Gatewalkers, all concerning? You're like, let's do a population vault. This is on you. You chose to be here. <laughs> victim blaming, I see. Yes. <laughs> you know me, Derry victim blaming Luttrell. Um, <laughs> let's, let's play the fucking adventure. <clears throat> you make me sick. So let's set the scene. Standing before you in the... A vision given to you through the eyes of Zuzlaren, whose hand you all touch at this exact moment. You see a devil. Urevian, the contract devil, and uh, a seven foot tall man with <laughs> scarlet skin. Okay. Sorry, I heard I heard a whimper. Yeah, I also heard a whimper. Oh, that was my markers. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I, no, okay. So there's a holder and it's it's like <laughs> there's like cardboard holding them in place. Hold on. Oh that oh my like god, that. you're right. I truly thought oh. that was you and I was like I put Aurelian's something... picture on the screen and then I heard that noise and I was like, okay. <laughs> Alright, man. I promise um, it wasn't me, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <clears throat> um so Urevian, let's describe him. Seven feet tall. Very uh very athletically fit. 
shirtless and wearing a long red wrap around his waist. Uh, he has jewelry around his wrists and around his neck, and he has a single monocle, which seems to give the appearance of a legal expert. He is a well-groomed goatee, but no mustache, spikes coming from his head, and long black flowing hair, almost as black as the massive horns which come from his back at angles, each of which is draped with important contracts that Urevian wants to keep close to him. As the devil stands, in a memory being shown to you by the Zebub, he speaks. So, why don't we start from the beginning? My name is Urevian, a Vistophilus and contracted agent of Belcora. But I assure you, I am no enemy of yours. You seek to vanquish her? Put an end to her murderous spirit, the threat she poses to mortal life, etc., etc., then, perhaps, we can broker a deal. One that greatly benefits both of us with a minimal number of precious lives lost. So, before he continues, he seems to pause every once in a while, very thoughtfully giving you time to react. He's not going to be able to hear any of what you say, but uh, maybe the Zebub will be able to pass on a message for you. Mm. How do you guys react to this initial statement? Theoria looks deeply unimpressed and unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, yeah. Same boat? He's really gonna have to say something, like, worthwhile in the next, like, 30 seconds for Silk to okay. be any type of pleased. <laughs> and Ulrich, what about you? All honesty, I think Ulrich is mostly eyeing suspiciously. I'm sure he's read enough about contracts with devils <laughs> to think, wow, this could end badly. Yeah, it's almost like it's an entire literary genre, right? Yeah. You yeah. you know that there have been countless bardic tales written about how you should not make a deal with the devil, but maybe, maybe this devil has a deal for you. So, Urevian kind of paces. So I have complied here, and he kind of pulls on one of the contracts he's written, a few notes, likely questions that you may have for me. I have been keeping an eye on you, making sure I learned about you. I did not wish to offend you with any manneristic quirks that us devils may have. And he kind of flashes a sharp smile. So let's talk. Question number one, who are you? And he looks down from the contract. I am Urevian, a contract devil of some renown, if I do say so myself. I was bound here a little over 500 years ago by the then living Belcora Harovex. She had me uh, write the contracts for, I want to say, about 125 devils under her command. Of course, when she died, we had a bit of an issue. Let's move on. Question number two. What do you want from us? Simply put, he looks up again, and he claps his hands together. You three are the third party agents I need to get out of this dreadful place and return home. Now I know what you're thinking. Perhaps you might find it strange that I have not already gone, but to be honest, I wish no ill will to the living. I don't want to hurt anyone in the town of Otari. In fact, if I had my way, I would long be gone. Simply put, there is something I want, but I am not allowed to go and get myself. Nor can I employ any infernal agents to retrieve it. No, the hands of a mortal foe of Belcora must deliver me my prize. My devils are valueless in this regard, as are the flesh warp soldiers from above. There is little for me to gain from an invasion. So I'm hoping we can find a middle ground that works for everyone. So how you guys can discuss, like I said, he pauses patiently, letting you take it in. He waves the hands and says, discuss among yourselves if you, so, if you need to. We have enough time in this message. Oh my Interesting. god. I don't like him. I, I can't blame you. I know I'm biased here, but I don't like him. 
I think I've read enough stories about these kinds of things to say I don't like this either. There's an entire country as, the, uh, as an example. Hmm. Eh. Now, if you've had your time to discuss, question number three. Why does it have to be a mortal foe of Belcora? And as he says this, a smile passes over his lips. <laughs> that is the delight I thought. of legalistic contract interpretations. It cannot be me. It cannot be any of my minions. It cannot be an ally of Belcora. The contract was written with the intent that Belcora alone could give me the prize as my payment. Which, of course, she will not, unless I have given her the full measure of services the contract requires. Additionally, she died and was unreachable for some time. However, a very technical reading means that any of your foes could also provide it. You are not me, you are not any of my minions, you are not an ally of Belcor. A foe of Belcora could deliver this to me and fulfill the termination of my contract. And you have thus far conclusively demonstrated that you oppose Belcora tremendously. Is that correct? Isn't this... Why is he asking? Isn't this pre-recorded? Yes, it is. I assume you just said that that is correct, and I'm glad we agree. Oh my god. Now, I can offer you something in exchange for this tiny little thing, and I let, will let you know in advance, no harm shall befall you. And I do not need trickery. I will not... I speak candidly here. Ulrich, Silk, and Fiore. There is nothing in your souls that I desire. You are all good people. And unfortunately, the legions of hell have very little use for good people. Of course, if you were interested in becoming corrupted, that is something we can discuss. Why? But no. <laughs> he's, so, he's so upfront about it. We, right now, I'm interested in making a very upfront deal. You retrieve something small for me, something you already have in your possession, but does not belong to you or anyone you care about and that you will not miss. In fact, it will probably make Otari, the, ho the town y'all live in, a much safer place too. We'll get to it. Now, what I will give you in exchange for this thing, which we will come back to, there will be peace in Otari, first off. I will take my leave. I will take all of my devils with me. And, before we leave... I will turn the remains of my army to one final task, uprooting the cave-in we caused to the lower levels. Question number four. You caused the cave-in? Yes. <laughs> it was well, done as a part of our contract with Belcora. Should she die, the emergency clause would activate, and we would have to, shortly before she regenerated, create a cave-in to ensure that no adventurers would come to her tomb just before she returned. It proved successful, their ghosts did reform, but it does mean you will no longer be able to get true without our help. On top of that, I can help you with any pressing needs you may have. Is there anyone in town that you need something done for? Is there any of you among you who are sick, injured, dying perhaps? You will find that the powers of hell can, when needs be, be of utmost use to good people. And again, no stain on your souls or your soul record either. Pause for effect. Discuss among yourselves. Uh, That's shocking information. I don't know how to feel about all this. I still don't like this. We can talk more in depth after, I suppose. Yeah. We should. Now, assuming you've all discussed. <laughs> if you have question number five. I would like more powers than what uh, you're offering. To which I respond, you drive a hard bargain, and we can offer you further agreements between you and my devils. If it was that you desired some fiendish abilities, we have some diabolic powers for those of you who may be curious. And I don't mean to be too presumptuous, but there is at least one of you who may be interested in greater power at a price. You demonstrated a knack for it thus far. What? But I say a little else. Let's talk about what it is that I want. <laughs> I look so annoyed want... at that. He's like, how dare you imply this? I require <laughs> the soul of Carmen Rajani. 
What the hell? Shaw drops. In his living body, if possible. Though I can make do should he perish. To that, Ulrich actually raises his eyebrows. Who wants Carmen? Question number six. You want Carmen? <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> Is Carmen, Carmen Rajani is the descendant, the last descendant of the Rajani bloodline. I owe the soul of a Rajani to someone much more powerful than myself. Huh? It would be unwise for me to leave this realm without it. To put it lightly, many, many centuries ago, Vol Rajani incurred the wrath of the Velstrax of her native Nidal. I'm supposed to get them Vol Soul. That has proven difficult. However, again, a liberal reading of my contract means that any Rajani soul will do. And Carmen is the last of their kind. Question number eight. What will this powerful someone do with Carmen's soul? And he shrugs. I don't know. <laughs> my contract merely stipulated to turn it over. Just arranging the deal proved considerably costly, but I stand to qu gain quite a bit of prestige in hell if it is completed. Question 10. What if he died? He has not died, I believe, so it is fine. But I do know a ritual that can summon his spirit out of River of Souls and back to the place where he died, where it can be captured if it is done within one year. But as he has not died, this is irrelevant. Question number 10. We can't give you someone's soul that's evil. That is not a question, but I understand where you are coming from. To which I respond, is it, Fiore? Oh. I am not the only person in this room who would be asking that goddamn question. <laughs> I say it is the lesser evil to turn over the soul of one corrupted individual than to allow an entire town's destruction. Far less bloodshed on, uh, on both sides. I do not want to raise Otari. I don't want to kill any of you. However, the contract I have with Belcor requires that as long as I remain within her employ, I must pursue the domination of the surface world and the destruction of her enemies. Once my contract ends, so does my obligation to her. All I need is the soul of Carmen Rajani to fulfill this contract. Question number 11. How is Carmen Rajani corrupted? And I think he just smiles almost pitifully. Oh, that bastard of a man. His soul is already damned for lying, cheating, theft, vandalism. He starts flicking through a contract. Destruction of property, <laughs> arson, abuse of power, interpersonal That's abuse, sick. blackmail, and three murders. Oh, wow. Yes. It is quite clear where he shall go in the afterlife. You would simply cut out the bureaucracy by giving him to me directly. That's exactly our job, but... Question number 12. If we hand over Car... Seven. Sorry, continue. It's not exactly our job, but point made, I suppose. Good point. Question, question number 12. If we hand over Carmen, he'll never have a chance at redemption. And he, like, kind of sh throws that contract over one shoulder. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that Carmen Rajani, who... Burned down a library, stole a historical relic, and murdered someone in some misguided ploy to feel like a big man. Do you really think that a man like that can ever be redeemed? Did he not say he had no interest in being redeemed? If I did not need his soul for this specific purpose, I would hire him. <laughs> Comforting. <sighs> question number 13. We'll never make an agreement with you. Not a question. I'm disappointed, both in your resolve and in your choice. Now, I have a re question returned for you. Are you sure you want to try that? <laughs> Consider it carefully. Turning down my offer will most likely mean your debt the next time you step into the vaults. And that is the last question. If you do intend to make me an agreement, well, then when you come to the prison floor, you bring me Carmen Rajani and We'll see what we can do with an alliance between the devils and Otari. And this is only a temporary truce, don't worry. Like I said, no second questions. 
Y'all just ask yourselves now. How badly do y'all want to get to the bottom of the Abomination Vaults? How badly do you want to defeat Belcor and save the world? Are there any other things you need? Are there people in danger that we can help with? Answers we can provide? You come to the devils. Otherwise... And he kind of like leans in and then he grabs Zoslaren by the neck and pulls him into the air and you <gasps> see over his shoulder over a balcony about 30 devils all in military position sharpening their weapons. Otherwise, we'll come to you. And with that, the memory ends and you're left in front of Zoslaren who gingerly rubs his neck. What do you guys do? Silk's like biting his thumb. I'm not doing that. I'm not damning somebody to hell myself. Uh, For what it's worth, he's already damned. That's true, and I suppose you wouldn't have to do it yourself, but the big question, or the big problem is, it's either Carmen or, remember, Absalom. Everybody here. I don't like it either. Don't get me wrong. Leave me alone. I need to sit down. I will see you guys in hell because I did my job. (laughs) And with that, a final buzz, Zuzlaren explodes in a puff of sulfury smoke. (sighs) And you guys are alone. And Fiori, you can take a seat if you need. Yeah, he he goes and does that. (sighs) Silk looks at Ulrich with like a worried expression. (laughs) Ulrich looks at Silk back (laughs) with the same expression. Hmm. The room feels a little cooler now as you sit, Fiore, catching your breath. Ulrich and Silk stand there next to you. And this question of will you turn over Carmen Rajani's eternal soul to a devil in exchange for not having to fight the devils and indeed maybe gaining some help around Otari weighs on your shoulders. I'm not doing that. I understand. Okay. Well, then let's think of it from a new perspective. A different one than what we were just given. What do we do then? Well, we would have to find out a way to clear the blockage, I guess, is the biggest part. And, of course, we would have to fight all of those devils. Which, it's an army, and as well as we've improved, we're only three of us. And we don't have a lot of time. As much as I hate it, we don't have that luxury of doing it the hard way. We also haven't spoken to Carmen since everything happened. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if we went to him with this information, he would genuinely change? Max, this is a ponder, not not exactly a the answer's already given to us based off of well, no, I'm not- Everything he said. I'm not arguing that Carmen will change. I don't think he will, even if I want him to. I'm saying I can't damn someone to hell myself. Do you understand what that would- Do you- I feel sick even thinking about it. Carmen could be- Carmen could be anyone. And I would feel the same. I don't have the right to damn someone to hell. None of us do. That devil doesn't. Only the gods do. They, they're... I don't... I don't... Mm. It's one thing if someone is attacking us and we have to kill a guy because they're attacking us. If I did that, how in the hell could I go back home? You want me to walk up to my mothers and tell them, I damn demand to hell today, and just expect them to be fine with that? This is... deeply unpleasant, I agree. I'm not saying that we should play at God. And I'm not saying that we are going to do this. I'm saying if we aren't, then where does that leave us? Where does that leave the town? And we think of other ways through it besides this this contract. I don't like doing this either. I hate that this man has been following us and knows that I'm in a I'm in between a rock and a hard place with Doriana. I don't want to have to fall back on him either with her. I'm not gonna sell her soul just to somebody else when she's already... We'll find other ways. Because I don't like this either. I... When he was talking, I noticed that 
He said previous souls in their line were hard to find, but maybe we could look into that. But if we run out of time, then we won't have a choice. And you don't have to do it yourself. Not that I'd like to do it, but I'd prefer the amount of lives we could save to be saved. I hate to say that he's right, but Carmen is not exactly destined for a pleasant afterlife. None of us have the right to damn him, though. And I think that that's something that would weigh quite heavily on all of us. We'll look into it. And for the first time ever, a tabletop role playing game has had an actually difficult moral quandary. <laughs> Personally, for me, Ritz, I don't find this complicated. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Uh... That sucks, but you should have murdered three people. Um, yeah, that is another thing worth noting, is that uh, you were not aware it was three. You thought it was one. Yeah. That's looks like he's had yeah, a, who the fuck were one and two? Looks like he's had a messy, messy past. I suggest that we not visit Carmen. It would make it easier if we have to accept the easy way. Certainly, it didn't seem like his time limit, his uh, uh, offer had like a time limit. It was just, when you come to see me, figure out what you want to do by then. Yeah. So you still have time to like go deeper into the dungeon. Uh, stop Jafaki, who is the immediate pressing issue. Yeah. Um, and then figure out how exactly you want to approach the... Um, how you want to approach the issue of getting to the eighth floor. Yeah. So what do you guys want to do? Do you want to stick together? Do you want to... Are you looking to go back into the dungeon today or do you want to maybe like take another day of rest before returning or what's the plan? We should take another day. Um, Silk wants to at least try and see if there could maybe be a way to... um, you know, take one of the souls of <laughs> uh, the passed away Rajani's, um, and sure. maybe, but yeah. Okay. He can, he can only do what he can do. Ark and Fiore, what do you guys plan on doing for the rest of the day? I'm not sure yet. We'll come back to you after you've walked around town a little bit. Ark, what about you? I mean, Ark might help Silk if Silk wants any assistance. Well, fucking course he would. Okay. <laughs> You two can do some research together. And Fiore, you can clear your head a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's start with you two. So, are you going to Silk's house? Bro. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. He does have a personal library, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. You make your way to Snitch Street. You um, make your way into the library. And you begin studying. Now, as a reminder, Silk, you have uh, an item in your bag that you have not yet uh, deciphered. Huh? Oh yes, I do. Which my, uh, that uh, those notes you got from the Sugati's body, which may have something interesting to talk about, but that won't be directly related to the soul issue here. Although mm. Ulric may have an easier time doing that because Ulric has, um, I mean, he's a bard. There are practitioners of like soul-based magic, you know. And don't forget, Ritz, you can also do a load of study on uh, your books, but maybe not while Ulrich's around. Don't Maybe don't pull out to Whispering Reads. Um, you know what? Just for some yeah. flavor, I uh-huh. don't think Silk cleaned up his desk. Okay. Oh, he that's was gonna not be planning on somewhere. having Ulrich over today. Okay. Well, uh... Just a normal one with the boys. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. I would like Ulrich to, as you walk in, make me a perception check. Okay. Oops. I gotta be fair. (gasps) Oh no. Oh no. Jaw drop. That is the worst time in the world for Ulrich to get a nat 20. (laughs) Uh oh, boys. Ulrich, you walk in and as you get into the library, first off, this place is a mess with a capital M. <laughs> and on Silk's desk, wide open, is the Whispering Reeds. You know, the Necronomicon for Nimbolot. 
and there's lots of notes and little sticky pads in it to make sure that you know where you're looking. Um, you specifically were like, hey, Silk, maybe don't read that because it might curse you. And Silk was like, okay, heart emoji. <laughs> um, it would appear that Silk has been reading that. Ah. Silk? Hmm? Is that the Whispering Reads? Uh, Silk? Silk's, like, neck snaps towards uh, Ulrich. Uh, and then at the table, and he rushes to it to close it. Uh, yes. Shit. How long have you been studying that? <sighs> since, since we got back from Absalom. Look, I. That's like two weeks. I have it under control. I, I'm. Ulrich, when you're not 20, you remember Silk being extremely shaky a few days after you first got back from Absalom and kept looking at the sky and, like, jumping at shadows. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being a rat. You got a nat 20, so I gotta, I gotta be the biggest rat in the world right now. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's helped a lot with my thesis. Oh, your thesis? You mean, wait, has your thesis been on Nimaloth? He nods. Okay. Are you completely sure you're okay? The look he gives Ulrich says no, but he doesn't say anything. It's nothing I can't handle. Still, I know you want to give your mom a good thesis, but... Is there a safer alternative than using this? It's all there is. I... I don't have anything without it. <sighs> and I'm a lot more scared of going back empty-handed. I think Ulrich approaches Silk and... takes his hood down grabs his hands and looks him in the eyes. Look, I won't lie, I am a little upset that you did end up reading this, but I'm more so worried about what it's doing to you. I care about you and I care about your safety, and if this thing starts messing with your head, so much, to, so, much so to the point where you might end up if it gets to a point where your notes end up like the one in your relic, it might be more worth it to just shut it down. He looks guilty, but more than that, he looks scared. And I think that he he lets go of Ulrich's hand and he clings onto him and kind of buries his face in Ulrich's shoulder. I'm sorry. Elric wraps his arms around Silk, places the hands uh, behind his head, and strokes his hair and says, It's okay. Just, if you're going to do something dangerous, make sure that I'm there with you. I can help. I really can at least try to help. I can look into any herbs or potions to stem any madness if that's possible. Elric is trembling a little bit. Silk can... Oh feel that oh but we can get through this thesis together and if there is anything you need you know you can come to me i'll put it on hold for now and and we'll figure something out okay i didn't want to lie to you i just i didn't want to scare you I know. I know, and... It's okay. Genuinely. We'll figure something out. Silk thinks about how at the end of the year he will have to go back. And he <laughs> he holds on to Ulrich just a little tighter. 
<laughs> well, you guys hold each other for a while. Do you do any study? Or is this forgotten about in in making sure that you're there for each other? Um Silk definitely needs some time. <laughs> but um he does tell Auric that they probably should get to studying or researching about this. And as much as he'd like to. <laughs> um and he would fucking like to uh, spend the time together. Uh, this is kind of a matter of life or death for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I want the two of you to roll me, roll me a cultism, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, both of you do some time reading true books, checking stuff out. I think more or less what you find is uh, no. There is no way to get a soul back after it's been judged. The reason being is that when someone dies in Golari, you know, in this universe, their soul enters the River of Souls and eventually it reappears uh, in the Boneyard um, where they will be judged and then sent to their final uh resting place as it were they're the hmm. plane that they will be reborn in um they cease to be the same person at that point they become what is known as a shade um and like the shade will often be a vastly different creature for example if you were well let's say you were going to hell you know you would become one of the damned a monstrous and terribly scared and mutilated version of your original self if you were going to heaven, meanwhile, you'd become the elect, uh, a version of yourself with golden halos and ghostly wings. Um, and if you went to, I don't know, let's say the maelstrom, the plane of chaos, um, you'd become the shapeless, half-melted reflections of your former self. The point is you would no longer be the same person. Yeah. So to, ha to say that that's a Rajani soul, it doesn't really matter, right? Because that's not a Rajani anymore. That's a new person. Yeah. Um, it also doesn't help that these people are living afterlives of their own now to give them to a devil would basically be ki kidnapping a random innocent and sending them to hell uh. what you also find I will say um, Ulrich on your role is that um, what would probably happen to Carmen in uh, if he were sent away is he would be sent to the netherworld the plane of the uh, Velstrak the torture demons um, uh -huh. they're not going to go easy on him. Uh, not because of anything <laughs> he did, but just because they're torture demons. And they like to whip Can't, you with chains. I can't imagine they'd want to <laughs> go easy on anybody, you know, being torture demons. No, I think what you find about uh, specifically shades who are in the netherworld. Um, oh, they're called the mutilated. Hmm. Um. They appear as they did in mortal life, except they are covered in wounds or partially adorned or wrapped in chains. Not great. Just so no. you know, that is what will happen to anyone you send to this guy. <sighs> I think Silk's like by by the end of their like research, Silk's got like his head in his hands, like <laughs> fingers kind of like through his hair, um, and he's like. Oh god, we don't have any other choice. Gonna make it easy on us, are they? What are we gonna do about Fiore? Not sure. I really don't know. Understandably so, he is adamant about not wanting to damn come in. And he course. has a point, it's not our place, but... It's as you say, what other options do we have? None. Of course, it's not our place, but it's also not our place to send idly by. Well, we could do something. It should also be noted something that I think Ulrich, you specifically probably have picked up on. Mm. A reason that Fiore specifically might have such a negative reaction to this. What ancestry is Fiore? Healing. <laughs> and what's Can't his wait. bloodline? The devil bloodline. 
And he has been long fighting against ever doing anything even remotely devil-like. Yeah. Huh? Ruh-roh. <laughs> now, as you two sit there, I think Borbo finally tumbles out and says, Why don't we just kill him? <laughs> Borbo. I agree I with Borbo. Borbo. I agree with Borbo. The I agree. whitest <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Not Fiore! Never Fiore! No, no, I didn't, I didn't think you meant Fiore. I agree with Borbo. Let's kill Fiore. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you generally like... He, his facial features never change, but you see him rattling very quickly as he realizes what he said. This, no, I mean, Bolivian! Why don't we kill him with a sword? Well, Bobo, it's not that simple. He's got an army with him. And it's not that we're not capable of adventures, but we are certainly not an army of devils. Plus, it's not just that, Bobo. It's the cave-in. We oh. would be lucky to even get that fixed in, what, a year? Maybe we could ask someone for a pricing quote? None of us have that much money. Maybe the mayor will pay. Maybe. Maybe. He might have some other things on his mind, but worth an ask, I guess. That would mean, hmm. on though, the other that hand, civilians would have to be sent down into the vaults. Hmm. On the other hand, if we make deal, maybe we can wish for the devil to magic away Doriana problem. I don't know if I want to rely on that for that. But it's an option. Uh, I suppose you're right. It's something to consider. We can't dismiss it. Uh, that's true. Ulrich looks so tired. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks, man. Yeah. <laughs> And I think we let you guys keep studying a little bit together, hoping that you'll find an answer that never comes up. Yes. And we're now going to pan to Fiore. Fiore, man! <sighs> I walk into hell. I kill the devil. I leave. Profit. <laughs> In real life. In real life. How is Fiore doing um, as you walk around? It's kind of a gloomy day out. The weather's not ideal. And yeah, you've got that whole thing on your shoulders now. Having a normal one? He's having a regular day. Naturally, you do not want to, under any circumstance, follow in the footsteps of your lineage and send someone to hell. No. But if you don't, then your job is going to be significantly harder. That is true. And if you die down there... That is one of well, the things that could happen. Fiori, where are you as you kind of, like, put these thoughts together in your head? Um, I think he's walking around, um, I think he's walking through town right now. Like, he's just kind of wandering through town. He's, he doesn't have a destination in mind. Okay. You kind of pace, Fiore. And as you are walking, suddenly you are accosted. Bruh. Um, a pair of hands reach out and grab at you, surely to pull you away into the darkness. What do you do? Um, I mean, he 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 <laughs> he he goes to like to elbow them out of the way so that he can uh, like like he's trying to uh, you know when you're turning around and he's turning around with like fighting. Oh, okay. You're trying. Are you like delivering an elbow? As you turn, like, oh, yeah, crap. yeah, he's like, hey, hey, uh, make me an athletics check. Okay. Uh, 31. Fiore, uh, describe how you, how you knock away the attacker. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I, I can't, I, I don't think it's anything like he's trying to be badass. It, it literally is just, hey, um, and like, he's going to look at them. He's turning around okay. with his elbow up and start trying to stop them. Okay, Fury, you whip around, you kind of push the other person back, and as they stumble, you see the identity of this vicious attacker, and it is, uh, it's it's a vanware. Oh, oh my god, I'm so sorry. He's like, whoa, uh, whoa, sorry. you okay? Afternoon to you too, I suppose. Hello. 
Hi, Vanler. Sorry. I, you, I, wow, I that was a, that was a hell of an elbow. Hello. <laughs> he bites his lower lip ever so briefly. Stop that. You're embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't I didn't mean anything by it. Yeah, um, I don't believe you, it. Okay, well. Are you, like, okay? You don't usually respond to, like, my jump out from behind you and put my hands around your face, like, you know, to cover your eyes. You don't usually try to kill me for that, so... Well, I wasn't going to kill anybody, but, um... I'm just kind of having a day. Yeah? You all right? I heard, um... Oh my god, wait, is this about Ben Hames? No, though I am like, incredibly the worried whole about town that. It's like talking about how how the men names they're moving out of mana. I don't think that's going to be permanent. I can oh. tell you about that. Cause, yeah, no, I mean, I won't tell anyone. I swear, but um, the rumor can, is can currently I, that can I trust that? What's the rumor right now? Well, it's that they're converting. Converting to Saren Ray. Oh, <laughs> I mean they. All got up in the middle of the like first thing in the morning to go back to the Dawnflower Temple, um, and like they had like luggage and stuff with them, so you know, sounds to me like they're converting. And you visited last night. People said they saw. So, what's going on, Fiore? Uh, they're staying for a while. How come? Please tell me I can trust you not to tell this. I won't gossip. I never gossip. I I mean ju- I'm not it. that. I'm not really. You know, I'm not fake like that. I mean it. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm. If this is serious, then yeah, I, I can stay quiet. What's up? Something's going on with Doriana, and it's just better for her to be at the church right now. Shit. Is it true she's got like psychic powers? Apparently, some of the kids at school say that sometimes when she's really mad, they can hear her in their heads. That I don't really know the answer to. I wouldn't be surprised if she's got something going on with her. She's kind of... I've talked to her. She's just got that kind of... It kind of reminds me of me when I was a little kid. You know, people don't really understand you. That sort of thing. I think he looks you up and down before putting his hands on his hips. But that's not what's upsetting you, is it? (laughs) Come on, let's, uh, let's go for a little walk, shall we? He kind of gestures to the river nearby. Let's go sit. Sure. The two of you sit by the river. You put your feet in the water and let pass by with your pant legs rolled up. He makes a few jokes, you know, trying to make you comfortable, but eventually he, like, looks to you like he's trying to figure out what's up. This is complicated and weird and intense. Is You don't mind? That's okay. We've been going through the, through the, the, the dungeon, mm-hmm. and it's been really wild. There's a tavern down there. But, okay. Full of why not? People from the are you, underdark. Are you messing and, with me? No, I'm serious. I, I, I. I'm serious. I've, I've been there. They have like music and drinks, and th- it's just people. Um, and it's not all bad. A lot of it is bad. It is, in fact, the tower of a villainous. But there's a blockage to go further down, and we need to get down there, and. Like, we need to go further down to protect Atari and also Absalom. Like, mm. I, I, I cannot stress enough that Absalom could be destroyed if this isn't careful. Or will he still be an attempt on it and thousands of people will die, even if they do manage? And regardless, Otari is in danger. Yeah. And one of the things that we've encountered a few times are devils. Okay. He definitely looks immediately a lot more on guard. He knows probably that you're a little anxious about this topic. Yeah. And one of them, I think it's like their leader. He's the kind of, like, he reminds me of a character in in a novel about Cheliacs. You know, like a, okay. like a, like a, a real like a prick, law- yeah. Like a lawyer type, that kind of. And he offered help with getting the blockage undone and to not try and kill us with his thousands of devils in his army if we handed over Carmen's soul. Wait, Carmen Rajani? Carmen Rajani. What the hell does he want with Carmen's soul? It's his lineage. He had what do you mean? offered, or I guess he owes somebody a Rajani soul. Shit, okay. And I don't want to do it. That's disgusting. I 
feel sick even thinking about it. I hate him. I hate Carmen. A lot. Yeah, I mean, being frank, me too, but continue. And I don't even... I don't even expect him to ever try and be a good person. Maybe his soul is destined for hell. But I'm not going to hand somebody over to a, to a devil. And the others want to. Or I don't know that they want to, but... They're considering it? It's the urgency and the danger. But I, I, I can't. I, I worship the redemption goddess. I'm... <sighs> I'm me. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I get it. <sighs> I want there to be something else, another way, another path through. There can't just be two options. I know I'm not, like, a redeemer champion, and I know I don't have that specific thing, and I'm not trying to redeem Carmen. I, I tried once, and he didn't want it, and if he wants it, he can get it himself. By himself. But it's not like... I'm in battle with him and fighting him. Both of us are fighting for our lives and I have no other choice. I am not against battle in that, in that way. And if he died in that, that would be that. But taking an unarmed man to be tortured for the rest of time feels s sickening. Even if it's to help people. <sighs> Shit. I just want to adventure. And I want to help people. Well, um, do you want my input? I don't know if it's any help, but as someone not involved, maybe. Sure. Okay, well, um, I mean, I think Kamen Rajani is a proper bastard, obviously. He is. If I saw him in the street, I would punch him. Yeah, and I, I reckon he probably will go to hell. But at the same time, I don't know, the idea of sending him to hell, but letting someone like... Jal Mesmin stay alive for the rest of his life sounds strange, yeah? It, yeah. I've always been against the execution thing. I, I know it's pretty yeah. normal, I just... I mean, you're a Serenite. It's your religion. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not wrong about that. I'm a Caden K. Luna, so I don't really have that same school of thought. We're told, <laughs> kill tyrants, it's funny. Um, well, I mean, like, I, I'm not against the idea of, like, if if the way to free Cheliax was to, like, execute their leader, I wouldn't be against that. But that's kind of a big case for me. Yeah. But, I don't know. What happens if you don't do? The devils will be our enemies. They won't help us at all. And then we'll have to figure out a way further down ourselves without any help. I'm not against the devils being our enemies. I don't exactly want to work with them. They make me feel sick. I don't even like thinking about them that much. Do you think you would be able to take them on? If they all came at us at once, probably not. But if it was the same as every other floor, then yeah. If a devil attacked me now, I'd handle. Well, maybe what you need to do is just buy a load of devil killing tools and get to it, you know? <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm not an adventurer. I never will be. But I want you to know that whatever choice you guys make, whether you do give Kamen away or not... It'll be the right choice, because it'll be used at Meta. You have a lot of faith in us. Of course. You're the Fogfen Few. You're our heroes. Oh, shush. Do you want to maybe get some drinks tonight? You know, not my place, but like, you know, maybe we go to like the fishery or something. Get some small. Yeah, I'd like that. Right, well, he kind of like looks at the sky. It's about six hours until dinner time. So do you want to kill six hours? Sure. And he smiles and pats your back and stretches and says, You know, I heard that there's going to be like a fishing competition next week. Maybe we should try that out. Maybe we should fish? get some practice in. Sure. I don't think I've fished that much before. I've done it before, but... All right. You seem like the type who'd know about fishing. Well, uh, I guess I'll teach you. Like, with a spear. Whoa. Okay. Well, that's... <laughs> he makes a face at you. <laughs> Whoa. What? Okay. <laughs> well, don't do that. Um, what? It's normal. Maybe, maybe you can invite the others for like a fishing mini game of some sort. There are whole cultures that spearfish. Okay, that's scary to me because I'm a white boy from Otari. You are a white boy from Otari. <laughs> <laughs> and so the two of you spend some time recuperating and you have a lovely dinner together. Dice Will Roll will return after these messages. 
We now return to Dice Will Roll. So, Silk, what do you do after hanging out with Ulrich for a while? Um, well, he, he kisses him goodbye at the door, of course. Uh, okay. But <laughs> I think that after they've gone, he <laughs> he's kind of got his forehead against the door for a while. Um, before he he heads upstairs and to Egonis's room. Mm-hmm. Um, he knocks very softly on the door, just in case he's asleep. No reply. He creaks the door open slowly. Make me a stealth check. He is at his desk when he hears you enter and uh, immediately turns around and just kind of stares at you. You do not sneak up on him at all. <laughs> Who goes uh, there? Uh, uh, Pirates? No, no, no. Are you sure? I think so. But you're not certain. Well, I think I'm Silk. Okay, that's good. I was going to call Silk if he weren't. <laughs> uh, come in, boy. He he closes the door behind him gently, and he uh, walks over to Egonis' desk. What's he working on? Uh, he's closed the book. <laughs> <laughs> he Amazing. Didn't roll high okay. enough stealth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't think you'd be awake. I'm. How are you? He feeling? waves a hand dismissively. Uh, it's uh, well, you know. Uh, I'm finding myself forgetful these days, I suppose. But it is what it is. When you get to my age, when you're uh, ninety or so, then uh, yeah, the days do tend to become difficult. Uh, you know, he is older than ninety. <laughs> Damn. Uh, he he's kind of like uh, leaned up against his desk, like uh, his his back is facing it, um, and he's sort of kind of side facing Egonus, and he he um he kind of like uh, pokes his cheek, and he's like, well, "You don't look a day over 30. <laughs> he mumbles. Aww. You haven't had any contact with anyone in Absalom, have you? Uh, oh well, I am supposed to. I'm supposed to be going back to work any day now. Mm. No, he's retired. He has been for like 40 years. Eh, closer to 30. <laughs> of course. Uh, I think that... <laughs> so kind of like... Uh, almost lets himself fall. So he's like sitting up against the desk. Mm -hmm. uh, is he in a chair or is he Wait. in his chair? He's in his chair. I think he takes his chair everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um... He kind of leans his head up against his chair and he says, Would you find it hard to go back? Uh, well, in my current state, yes. And honestly, I've come to quite like Otari, if that's what you're asking. Uh, it'll, it will be what it is. I, it's not particularly easy all the time, but if I had to go back, I would. Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm having the same trouble. Oh? And how do you mean, Silk? Well, I have to go back to... Ultimately, yes. I know I do. I I came here with the knowledge that I'd eventually I have to go back. And I suppose I will. But? But I don't want to. And why is that? I like the people here. Hmm. I don't know that I'd do very well without them. And you wouldn't do well in Absalom either? Maybe academically, if I tried. But, but personally? Not at all. And <laughs> I find myself thinking that maybe it'd be easier to get out of their hair. Easier for me and them. And the people of Otari? Your friends? Mm-hmm. Silk, my boy, let me give you some advice. I know just the thing you should be doing. What? Drop out of that bloody school. <laughs> Professor, I can't no, do they're that. All, they're all pedants. They've all got sticks in their anai. <laughs> they're not a 
good thing to say about half of them. They're so focused on appearances rather than the practical application of magic. You know I'm not a graduate myself, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. You... The Arcanamerium instead. And they were no better! Really? No! Goodness gracious, the world of academia, Silk, is full of egotistical little twats who think that by writing the longest name possible on a thesis that they are able to prove that they are the best at magic. Well, let me tell you something. You've never graduated a school of magic, and yet look at you, mastering fireballs and shooting lightning bolts. Do you know how many higher-level wizards spend all day without even so much as thinking about their spell slots? They're all... They're all old fuddy-duddies who rely on the prestidigitation at best. An apprentice can cast prestidigitation. Look, some of the greatest wizards of in all of history, Old Mage Jatembe, Corbis Larni, they never had a teacher of their own. They walked the world and found what they needed to from magic that way. So what I'm saying is if the very thought of returning to the College of Mysteries makes you feel dread, why bother? The people in this town need you, Silk. You've been doing a very good job at making sure that they're safe. The magic you've learned and the information you've been able to uncover, and I've seen your books, I've seen your writing, that is the making of a good wizard, not some diploma or the recognition of a more experienced wizard. I'm experienced. I recognize you. That ought to be enough. Sook's looking up at him with, like, big watery eyes. <laughs> Uncharacteristically put together. Yeah, wow. That's very meaningful, Nagonas, especially from you. I just... I suppose I'm most afraid of letting my parents down. Fuck them. <laughs> Please. <laughs> your father's a nice man. Your mother has too high expectations of everyone, of both her children. She always has. I've just spent so much time. I just... I feel like it's wasted if I don't follow the through. The cost fallacy and all that. Extremely so. I feel like I am at absolute depths. Tell me, boy, if you were in charge of plotting an expedition, you spent a year planning the expedition, you knew exactly the path you had to make, but as halfway there, no, let's say eight tenths of the way there, you came across the fact, the indisputable truth, that any further in and you would be doused in, in lava, that there were no way to get to your destination, not after looking for a hundred years to get there without killing yourself in lava. Would you blindly walk into said lava? No. I rest my case, boy. Uh, but it, uh, You're walking uh, into lava. It's time for you to look around and question. Do you want to spend a hundred years looking for an answer? Or do you want to accept what's in front of you? I guess I just thought... That one day I could. You already have. <laughs> Keep my words in mind. Maybe one day they'll sound more appealing than they do in this moment. I just hope I'm still around to see it. <laughs> I hope so too. I'm quite fond of you, you know. I'll come back as a ghost. Or oh, perhaps it's <laughs> time I research lichdom. <laughs> oh no, don't do that. <laughs> I won't tell the Serenites if you don't. Well, all right then, my lips are sealed. Will you bring me my book on soul cages, boy? I'm going to start research. Ah, <sighs> of course. Uh, he, he gets up and he, he brushes off his skirt. You make your way out. And as you do, Egonis turns back to his desk and opens the book where he was writing a progress report on how you're doing. Oh. Uh, <sighs> how are you doing, Silk? It's rough. Um, Silk always used to dream of getting to graduate from his mother's school and getting the tattoos and being who she thinks he can be and being someone great 
that other spellcasters would be jealous of. Uh, part of him thinks that he can't do that without graduating. Or at least finishing out uh, a single fucking um, like course of education within the academy. But logically he knows that Agonis has a very good point. Fuck him. <laughs> so, would you return to your room and spend the rest of your night hoping that Agonis was joking about becoming a lich? Surely, right? <laughs> and I, I think morning comes. Do we want to meet on the road to uh, the fog fan? Yeah. Okay. So, it is, we'll say, 10 a.m. Silk, Fiore, and Ulrich, how are you two doing after your very, very stressful two days? I really mm -hmm. like the part where where Sigonis said, ain't I? Ain't, you liked that part? <laughs> I liked good. that a lot. Pretty... That, that was a really good one. That was pretty good. Just wanted to share. <laughs> Listen, the old man's got a point. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he is actually right. The man's a king. Um, Man had nothing but bangers so to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, and if you're in Silk's position at home, listen to Egonus. Um, drop out of college. Drop out of college. Become a stripper. Drop out. Join my emo band. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Um, Fury, Silk, and Alric, how are you guys looking as you make your way back into the dungeon? Probably not talking about. Uh, the elephant in the room, although maybe. Yeah, there is an awkward, like, uh, barrier that has that written in bold letters across it. Yeah, there's an elephant following you around who's holding a sign that says, Kill Carmen? <laughs> yeah. Oh <my> God. <laughs> They're standing there for a minute, and then Fury's like, There's a fishing competition next week. <laughs> oh, really? Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, Van oh. Weir was talking about um, us Whoa. doing that all together, maybe. Um, if he wanted to do that. God, I have to put that on the nice. fucking calendar. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, fuck. We'll say it's on Oats Day next week. Bro fucking hates having to do Oh, that. fuck. Uh, why did I say fishing <laughs> minigame? What have I done? We're oh, gonna, you guys uh, are so dead. Guys, <laughs> we're going to TPK the party. Please, oh, please, me. please. <laughs> um, uh, Silk uh, Elbows. Uh, Fiore, and he's like, I bet he's quite the talented rodsman. Will you? <laughs> I'm so hard to Whoa. hold it in. Wait a second. <laughs> Silk, make me hmm? an arcana check. Okay. What the hell could he possibly need that for? Silk, you have a, you have an, a magic item in your bag, which will give you an incredible advantage on this uh, competition. <laughs> what? <gasps> Wait! You have the professional fishing tackle. I do! How do you have that? You got it from a corpse that the fucking oozes ate. And you kept it. I'm obsessed with that, actually. I know a fish hates to see me coming. I told the College of Mysteries I'd be working my casting. I never said what kind <laughs> Can we get can we get in in the silk voice? I only say morning because it would only be a good morning <laughs> if yeah, I was sure, fishing. Yeah, sure. I only say morning because well, if it was a good morning, I'd be fishing. <laughs> <laughs> now oh. this now this is content. Ulrich so wants dumb. to fish fear me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay. As you guys march your way true to the fog fan, what is the plan today? In the Dungug. Well, they still have to deal with the, like, actually very present threat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm really it, glad we saved... We, we saved the most important NPC in all of uh, Abomination Vaults, though. Mm. Martian, the idiot. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, two of you tried to... I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Judas and Judas! <laughs> Um, <laughs> point is uh, as you guys make your way back into the dungeon you know that you have an once you take care of Jafaki you'll have an uneasy amount of time on your hand yeah Belcora cannot 
reignite the gauntlet until she has someone to act as a prism for its beam. Remember? That's what was happening to uh, Lazda Venkervale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she has been significantly slowed down. But any day that you're not returning into the dungeon and not fighting against her forces is another day that she has the opportunity to somehow get someone that she can put onto that torture device. True. So you guys need to move faster than you might like. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to consider if that's the right move. Because even though his deal does sound good, Fiore is not really on board at all. Ulrich, you sound kind of two minds. And Silk, it sounds great, but you've read books. There's fine print somewhere. He's read, fine some, print somewhere. he's read some weird yaoi about this. Yeah, you've oh, read some weird yaoi about devils. But more, more importantly, genuinely, I think you guys aren't idiots either. There's more to it than meets the eye. And that is something that you need to kind of consider. Because after all, if you if you make the wrong choice, well, some innocents will die one way or another. Now I hate this trolley. I hate it. I wanna get off. There's a there's a trolley and there's a devil standing on the side being like, Well a difficult choice. Which <laughs> one will you run over? Um so you guys make your way back into the dungeon and very thankfully you only have to go down one set of stairs before you get to that teleportation circle which will take you directly back to the laboratory specifically into the back of the warped brew tavern yeah so fellas you want to make your way down there yeah sure okay well back to the laboratory you go so, you guys appear in a flash in the back of the Warp Booger Tavern, and stepping over some barrels, you make your way back down the corridor into the kitchen. And uh, as you do so, um, certainly you see Falksy, uh, Glastrumdur, and Jedzeli, uh, the three people who were working here last time, uh, and they seem surprised to see you. I think Falksy, the disgusting, vile, evil, cruel drow, um, hmm. he turns to you with his eyebrows raised and says, what the hell? What the hell? What were you, were you not <laughs> just hiding in the, in the barrels? Yes. For two days? Yes. Why? <laughs> I love it in there. He looks to the others and says, did any of you see them in there? And Jadzeli says, it's coming closer. It's coming closer. And Gushroom oh, says, Oh, who phone, girls? Oh, we're going to get you out anyway. Oh. <laughs> Am I fucking going insane? That's not. No They'll never believe you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't torment them. <laughs> it's just fun. Foxy stares at you open mouthed as you make your way uh, out <laughs> to the bar behind. Uh, he winks on know, his way out. Uh, Vishkari, the or the saucy, saucy Ordofan bartender, she looks at you and she doesn't seem at all surprised to see you. She's like, hey. <laughs> oh, uh, hi. And you guys have some time to explore the tavern and more importantly, figure out where else you want to go. Uh, so remember that you you have already been to the south. That's where you found uh, the viewing chamber to the testing arena and the sauna. Uh, but that being said, uh, you could go to the right, uh, which leaves the it leaves the uh, Warp Brew Tavern into what appears to be more of an inn portion of the tavern. I guess people do need somewhere to stay here. So then, to the left uh, is the labor more parts of the laboratory that you didn't like investigate earlier. Uh, if you went back to the stairway, there was also a door to the right on this main floor that you didn't have time to investigate before either. So, decisions, decisions, right? Mm. Where do we go? What What do? Uh, well, straight for the neck? Or did you have any stops you wanted to make? Mm, I'm not sure what else we need to do. I certainly don't have anything that I'm specifically looking for. Anything else pops into the head now? Just... I think just trying to find the main scientist, that's really all I can think of, right? Yes. 
So the question is, what direction do you think that scientist is? Oh boy. Hmm. Let's get to find it. And we can steal ourselves on the way. Yeah. Sounds good. Hmm. From the hallway they came into when they first got to the tavern, there I think there was another door on the other side of the mm -hmm. hallway. That's right. Do you want to leave uh, back into the long corridor where you found those oozes in the first place? I do. Okay. Well, you guys make your way past the Warp Brew Tavern and out into the dungeon. So the doors outside uh, the Warp Brew Tavern, there's uh, the doors to the north, which lead to where you've been already, but that's also the way to the stairwell. And as Silk has suggested, that might be where there's more doors into the dungeon deeper. Otherwise, mm. to the west, there's a big, heavy set of double doors that have not been touched. Hmm. We could go... I mean, we haven't... I mean, this big hallway and not having gone through this way is kind of... Let's go through then. Sure. You okay. do it. You have a bigger weapon. <laughs> Fiore raises his shield just in case, and he's like, Oh, Ulrich, there's no traps or anything that you can see? Would you like to make me a perception check, Ulrich? Please, yes. Uh, where is my... There you are. None that you can see, although there is a bad smell coming from the other side. Uh, uh, trap? I don't see one, but hold a cloth to your nose. No. Oh. All right. Yeah. All right. Silk takes out his beautiful handkerchief that is that is doused in expensive perfumes. <laughs> Holds it daintily <laughs> to his nose. I'm scared to ask how much all this costed you. Oh, is it a couple hundred gold? Oh my god. I grew up in a temple. <laughs> <laughs> the price I must pay for beauty is an insurmountable number. Well, you'd have it regardless, but if it makes you happy... Oh, <laughs> you! <laughs> oh, God. Oh, hey, Jesus. So, what you see... Uh, uh... Well, I think the room is very big, so Silk and Ulrich, you guys can't see too much. Um, but you can smell what comes out of it. Hmm. It's a lot of rancid meat. Kind of looks like blood over there. Oh yeah, there's a few really, really, really big blood stains on the wall from what you can see in your limited vision. Fiore, mm. you can see everything. Um, He's making a face. It's not good. Um, anchored shackles and fetters lined the north and west walls, and blood stains obscure the stone floor. At the east and south, two sets of double doors lead out of the room. Two steep staircases beside each of them lead further below. So, what you see, Fiore, is a lot of blood caking the floor, like almost completely making it invisible. Right. Um, a lot of like chains uh, and iron balls. Uh, there's a twitch. There's a twitching flesh pile in the corner. <laughs> Frown. Visi very, very visible. Like you know when somebody frowns and it actually looks like a cartoon character. Hmm. That's yeah. the kind of way he's frowning right now. <laughs> oh, you weren't kidding about the unpleasant smell. Wow. Ugh. I caught it in time. This seems like a, a good sign for the good doctor, right? Uh, I hope so. I don't want to follow a scent trail to him. Well, there's there's stuff deeper in the room. Like I said, there's a set of double doors. But are you willing to go through this place? No. <laughs> Me when I'm out. <laughs> but if he's down a really nice hallway elsewhere that smells really good. There's another door down there. And... Um, stairs. <laughs> Damn it all. Okay. Ugh. That's just... I don't like it any more than you do. Oh, believe me, I hate this more than any of you combined. Um, but... Let's just get it over with. Fuck it. And so you step deeper into the room. Yeah. 
So, like I said, there's the doors to the south. There is also uh, a stairway down, but that seems to maybe even lead to the floor below. Mm -hmm. Into the prison? We don't want to go there yet. I don't want to skip an entire boss. <laughs> we I have will not made up our minds. All right, so I go over here, and then I half a press. And then I go over here, and I continue half a pressing, and then I, I, I then I B press, Stop. and then I go all the I, way to your, the your shenanigans. By the way, Fiore, your shenanigans. You're running into a wall in the corner. You've left poor Silk and Alric in the dark, and they are both visibly frightened by this. I'm not doing it for real. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it for real. Well, regardless, what's the plan? <laughs> Looking around, what? I guess. Okay, move into the south. He does not step in blood. Uh, yeah, okay, so you don't step in the blood. So. Yeah. And you take a step to the west. Mm hmm. Towards that twitching meat pile. <laughs> the twitching meat pile, which, Silk, make me a perception check. Okay. Silk. Mm hmm. You hear it making little noises. <sighs> it appears to be weeping a little bit. Browns. Uh, and then an eyeball opens and looks at you, and that mm. weeping stops, and it is replaced by a shrill shriek of fury. Oh, Fury's this is just ah! like Left for Dead. Um, <laughs> well, can you see it, Ritz? I don't want to. Uh, let's like take a be it. let's take a better look at the thing that stands up just there. <laughs> oh, the thing. Uh, well, it certainly looks like a, yeah. a thing from John Carpenter's 1982 cult classic horror movie, The Thing, starring Kurt Russell. Honestly, um, it, it actually does. No, it looks it looks like the Blair Thing, if anything. Um, spoilers for the thing. Uh, <laughs> an awful pile of flesh stands up. Um, from every joint, bones protrude from its skin and flesh. Like, the bones are too long and too sharp for the body to hold in. It appears to be a large, large lump. It has two long arms, um, with three massive nailed fingers. It has no head, no shoulders... Uh, it's almost like someone hammered the head into the body with eyes looking in multiple directions at once. Where mm. its stomach should be, there is a mouth. Where the inside of the mouth should be, there is a second smaller mouth. Its rib cages open to look like more mouths and its lower half is just a slithering mass of tentacles. As more pieces of body poking out the wrong angles, it's awful and it's the size of an elephant as it looms above you it lets out another gurgling shriek and it is immediately rushing towards you not you plural you silk fuck me everyone I want you all to roll initiative just a normal day in Otari silk doesn't think about dropping out he thinks about killing himself <laughs> whoa okay not 20 for Fiore. I, Fiore Save probably me. saw something. Saw this thing get up. I was like, nah. -uh. Say me, bitch. He, he said, no, no. I can't let him see. And Ulrich, that's a 21. Okay. Top of the order is going to be Fiore. Fiore, you see this thing get up. You see this thing let out a shriek. And you see it surging towards Silk. What do you do? Um... Well, it's a big-ass monster. Yes. There's not really many other ways to deal with a big-ass monster. Fiore is going to charge at the beast. Okay. Can I use smite, please? Absolutely. Uh, Fiore, how do you smite this guy? I think while he's charging towards the monster, um, he grips his sword a little tighter and it shines with the light of the sun. Um... 
and I think he said, because when he fights these things, it's less, ew, that's disgusting, it needs to die, and more, oh my god, that's horrifying, I need to put it out of its misery. Um, and I think it's something like that. I think he's like, it's like a prayer for it. For it. You know what I mean? Okay. Awesome. Um, and uh, I think he's going to, uh, I think he'll attack. Okay, go for it. Um, it makes sense to me that he would have pulled his sword out in this way. Or actually, yeah, yeah I, absolutely. It, yeah. Um, you already had your sword out. You're going into an unknown room. You're not stupid. Yeah, not here. If he, like, if we were in Otari, then yeah, I'd be like, yeah, I'll pull out the sword. But they're in the dungeon. Thirty-three. Uh, that is going to be a hit. Roll me that damage. Okay. Thirteen damage. Very nice. You deal thirteen damage, and this thing, uh, it you cut through gristly meat, and it lets out another shriek, and you have one action left. Uh, then I think he is just going to, uh, like, raise his shield. Okay. Um, do you think I could d- do the... Th- when the I raise the shield, the, it attacks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can absolutely do that. It'll be on minus five, though. 28. That's a hit. Roll me that damage. Pretty good damage. 18. Very nice. Uh, the lion's shield plunges its fangs into this monster... And uh, you are watching as it rips chunks from its fleshy, awful body. And okay. Fury, is that your turn? Yeah, that was... I moved, I smited, I attacked, I rose a sh- raised my shield, and that also attacked. Okay. Well, it is now the... De- you assume it's a flesh warp. Certainly it looks like it. Um, and Fury, you are right up in its face, and it ignores you and w- goes past you. Uh, it goes for Silk. Um, and it doesn't come up quite up next to him because it has reach, lol. Um, it slitters past, um, and it shrieks. It's going to go for a jaw strike. Its mouth almost extends from its body as it chomps down on silk, and that is going to be a 25 to hit. That's a hit. Retributive strike. Mm-hmm. Go for <laughs> it. Hit him. Um, don't worry, silk. I won't let him hurt you that much. That is 18 damage to you, Silk. Okay. Silk, you get 9 resistance to that. That's 9 damage total. 21? 21 is a miss, unfortunately. You still protect Silk, but uh, unfortunately this thing seems to be single-mindedly attacking him, of all people. It's okay, because Fiore was is just trying to distract him anyways. And okay. I, I helped you not get injured as much. So that's what I really wanted. It slaps out with a mind... S- oh, dear. Silk, with a tentacle strike, that is a critical hit against you. Oh, jeez. It's nice showing you all. Um, well, that's going to be... Whew, that's going to be 44 damage, Silk. Oh, my God. Do you want to know how much uh, HP I have left? How many? Four. Oh, wait, why did I take 42 damage? Oh, it's almost like you have a resistance of some sort. Uh, A scholarly defense, as it were. Wow, against against aberrations. Thank God I'm not on 2 HP instead of 4. Wait, thank (laughs) God I'm not on... (laughs) Uh, Well, Silk, I have bad news. I also need you to please make me a will save. Nothing ever goes my way. Mm, 21. Silk? Oh, God. You, as this thing's tentacle connects with you, you feel memories surge through your mind. But they're not your memories. They're memories of a man. He's in a city far from here. He had a wife, a child, a life. And you see him hunting, farming. You don't understand, but you see him do these things and you... You know that much that, that he had a life and you see him one morning washing his face as he shaves and he pulls the towel from his face and you see the face of an elf and it sees you and what it and it hates you for looking like it used to look silk you instinctually know that this thing is a flesh warp that used to be an elf and this is what happens to elves when they're flesh warped. Oh my god. You are stunned too, you get one action next turn. Okay. 
Silk, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> so my speed is 30 feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead over here. Uh, 30 feet. No, up. you don't. Oh, that is yes, so I close. fucking do. That was yes, so I close. Do. Silk, you feel Fang's clothes on the back of your fucking cloak, and they miss by a mere inch with a with a uh, <laughs> opportunistic strike <laughs> that missed you by literally a hair's inch. That is a twenty-two against your AC of twenty-three. He he's like sprinting away, and he like fucking falls down at Ulrich's feet. Jesus Christ, Silk! This thing fucking hates you. <laughs> this thing was you. Yeah. Um. Oh, Rick, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Not great. Rick is gonna move in front of Silk. <laughs> okay. Good call. And I think uh, they're gonna cast a fourth rank sooth. <laughs> okay. So. Alric, you allow your music to surge into Silk and repair his soul and his wounds. Uh, roll that for me. 43. Whoa! Silk, you're almost back at max HP, huh? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Holy shit. How are you doing? <laughs> I've been better. Uh, feels weird to go from... Um like what like 30 something hp down to four back to 43 in the span of what six fucking seconds <laughs> bro's not yeah it's been normal. pretty bad you suffered a mortal injury and now you're totally fine <laughs> uh not great uh really bad uh there's something very scary about being in a situation where uh somebody is trying to hurt you for the sole reason of you being you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This thing is awful and it hates you. Alright, how are you doing? <laughs> that was terrifying. Mm -hmm. Um after this fight Alric is need Alric needs to Alric needs to cast something after this fight. <laughs> yeah. Um Fiore, it's your turn. Uh I think Fiore is going to continue to attack. Okay. Because he I mean he, he, he is literally like, this is horrible. Neither of us want to be here. This guy just probably does not even want to be alive anymore. Is, and he's just mad. Like, it, he's just got to deal with it. You know what I mean? Um, so I think mm -hmm. he is going to attack. 34. Yeah, that's a hit. Roll me that damage. 13. Okay. Wapow! Do I need to use an image... Or do I need to use a, uh, an action to, like, sustain no, Smite? No, Smite continues every time that the Erna Curse does a hostile action against someone. Okay. So, it's already done on, uh, on Silk. Okay, I was just wondering if I needed to do something. Um, do I need to raise my shield again? I don't know how long that lasts. She, uh, raising your shield only lasts one turn. Uh, then I'm gonna raise my shield again. <laughs> okay. How many? How often can I do the, the attack? Does that always happen, or is it like once a? Yeah, the you can only activate the lion's bite once per day. That's fine. I just wanted to know. Um, he is going. He's still to... animated, so you can keep. He can st still keep biting, but um. But he, it's not like the he, the, he, the raise yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, Fiore is going to. I'll have him attack. Oh, hold on. No. The shield remains animated for one minute, during which time you can strike with it each time you raise the shield, as well as with a strike action. So, yeah, you can just keep raise shield. Um, raise shield. Um. Wow, okay. that's fun. I like that. I like that. Um, Okay, I'll attack one more time. If it doesn't... Okay, <gasps> well, okay. Huh. Whoa! The lion shield let out a roar, because that's a nat 20, and he's very hungry. <laughs> My jaw's on the fucking floor. Um, okay. What happens here? I mean, the shield... The shield hungers, I fucking guess. I don't know, man. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even think Fiore Fiore's trying. His, his his own jaw is on the floor. He's like, eh, what the... The... Oh my god. Um... <laughs> the crit that you pulled is hobbled. Until healed, the target is clumsy too and takes a minus 10 to all his speed. 
Ritz, I will keep you from dying if it kills me. I'm gonna uh, suck your that, dick. Roll me that damage. <laughs> okay, uh, and this is... I've done a critical one. And because you have... Uh, you get crit specializations. Yes. Okay, uh, well, with a shield, you knocked a target back from you five feet. So, whoop-pow. Yippee! Not great with his current speed uh, reduction. You have one action left. What do you do? Um, I think... <laughs> I don't know if Fiore is going to do anything else. I mean, it's not super... Like, I don't think there's anything he needs to do right now. I mean, you can see he's definitely going to run for Silk. Can I get between them? Yeah, absolutely. He's going to move so that you'd have to get through him. Okay. He's You know, he's braced himself, that sort of thing. Okay. Well, uh, it is now the Flesh Warp's turn. Um... This awful tentacle horror uh, has a minus 10 to its speed. And that... <laughs> that means it has a speed of five feet. Nice <laughs> try. Oh, boy. Um. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to start crawling towards you, Silk. With five mm. feet movement. Mm. Um, and then I'm going to measure something. Nope. It's going to crawl another five feet and another five feet. Um, because the, it it needs to get closer to you. And it is crawling towards you, just completely ignoring all other stuff, even though it is extremely slow right now. Silk, it's your turn. Good Christ. What do you do? Oh, man, this sucks. Um, he feels really bad for this thing. I think he's going to lightning bolt it. Okay, fair enough. It is within range. It is within your line of sight. Zap him up good. I think this is the first time that Silk's been like, Jesus, put that thing out of its misery. Uh, so give me a reflex save. Okay, not great because it's clumsy. Ooh, that's a 19. Pretty bad. Uh, that's going to be 31 damage. Silk, you let loose a bolt of arcane lightning into this thing, and the monster stomachs it, but it's still going. It's still coming. What do you do? Oh, fuck. What do you do? I'm not leaving shit to chance. 30 feet into the dark, baby. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. I'm going into the darkness. I'm going home. Uh, Ulrich, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, Alric is going to first Courageous Anthem, because he didn't do that yet. Okay. Okay. Music. And then, what kind of music are you playing, quickly? Uh, well, he has his bow out right now, so I think he's whistling, yeah. Okay, awesome. And then he's going to shoot this fucking thing. 30. 30 is a hit. Roll me that damage. Five damage. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's respectable. Uh, it's barely holding on. You've got one action left. What do you do? Shooting with a plus nine. 24. That is a hit just about. Roll me that damage. Seven damage. Ulrich Revra, how'd you put this monster out of its misery? I think after seeing Silk get nearly fucking downed in front of him, uh, Ulrich healed and then went into immediate attack boyfriend mode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so I think one of the arrows, I think... Uh, after doing Courageous Anthem, just like barely grazed one of its weird looking tentacles. And then the other one, after he was like, after he saw that it was still standing, uh, went through the eye. Oh, the Erna Curse lets out a gurgling howl before it just slumps onto the floor with that second arrow. And it is dead. And combat is over. How's everyone doing? <sighs> oh, good heavens. Ulrich rushes oh. back towards Silk. Like, are you okay? Uh, <laughs> I want to leave. I want to leave right now. <laughs> I, I am so sorry. Are you doing? Are, are you? I'm okay. Oh, God. That. It's okay. That was an elf. It was. It used to be. Oh. Uh, uh. Thing. I don't understand well, how people can be that evil. 
I can understand how somebody could, I don't know, kill a guy or be a thief for their whole life, but that just feels, that's just wrong. No reason to kill him. We will. I will not let him continue to hurt people. Not as soon as we get our hands on him. Then let's get our hands on him. And make sure he can never do this again. <sighs> ah, but before we go and fight first at Silk. Oh. Yes, my dear. He puts a hand on Silk's shoulder and casts Life Pact. Oh! Uh-huh. Tell me about Life Pact. Uh, using your life force or spirit as a conduit, you bind the targets in a mystical pact. If one of the targets is about to take damage, that would reduce it to zero. All of the targets immediately lose three hit points. Alric is not... Alric is putting his hand on Silk, Silk's shoulder and saying, if you take damage, I will... Like, you, if you take damage, no, you're not. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so there there can be up to six creatures. Are you just casting on Silk? So he looks at Fiora and goes, would, would you like to share in this? Just in case. If you want to, I mean, you Actually, can do your thing. Don't worry about me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Should we hang on a minute? You're mostly up front. You mostly take much. You don't, good amount you of don't damage. want... I don't know if you want to take all the damage I'm taking. All right, thanks about it and goes, <laughs> you are much stronger than I am. <laughs> don't worry. I have a shield. The shield bites, That's bites a few times. He's like, hey, stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Uh, no, oh no worries. I'd say put a leash on it, but I don't think you can. <laughs> well, it, yeah. well, technically it's attached to a, a shield, so it's never gonna actually do anything, but it, you know. Scary. Extremely <laughs> useful, though. Uh, yes. <laughs> Very. And he can be nice. Can be. <laughs> Stop that. I don't know about that. That's yet to be seen. I'm so glad you formed an emotional bond with your shield. He listen, man. <laughs> there, like, there, there's a whole, there's a whole mechanic about that in Champions without me trying. <laughs> <laughs> so, where now? There are stairs deeper into the dungeon, down to the floor next, or there is a uh, doorway to the south. Um, mm. there's the doorway. I really don't want to go downstairs yet. Me either. That's Go with the doorway. Okay. It's... Yeah. It's down this way. And he shows them the way. Well, another door. Alric, is it trapped? Please tell me it's not. He stares very intently at the door. Is it trapped? Seems okay. <laughs> you think? Maybe? Smile. <laughs> Alric eyes it and goes... It seems fine. You sound unconfident. <laughs> I will not lie. If you need to put your shield up, you probably should. Well, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> you two, just in case. You two stay right there, okay? If something you got it. Oh, I, <laughs> Silk! I know you really want to open the door. <laughs> Just another hallway. Guess what, really, guys? Really, really long hallway. It's a bullshit ass long hallway. Woo! They made this. Wait, let's, they made this wait, wait, wait. Let me check how long off. this thing is. Let me check how long this hallway is. <laughs> it is a Why 145 is feet long hallway. Why oh my god. For what reason? Mysterious darkness beckons before you. It's... You feel like if you run down this hallway forever, well, you'll never get to the other side. Fiori gets annoyed. He's like, they made this place to piss me off. Wait, before you go any further, but if you run down this hallway, you get a feeling you may never stop running. Yeah. I'm not running. There may be... there. Na you oh, may never walking. get to the other side, guys. Stop! Be careful! Oh, hey, look. There's a door at the other side. Good lord. Oh, yeah, there's a door. There's a door and a hallway? Oh, yeah. There is a second doorway, actually, uh, uh, that goes out to the right. Hmm. Um... Hey, Silk, can I see the map? Of course. He he hands him his Astronomicon. Mm. I don't know if we should open this door here. No? If you look, and he sort of points at the map, it looks like it leads into that gigantic arena with a thing we really didn't want to see. Fantastic. Are you we sure? What do you mean, Borbo? 
I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, Borbo. I'm going to open the door, and if it's something I don't want to see, I'm closing it. <laughs> okay, be careful. Close the goddamn door. Nope. Didn't want to see it. On the other side, indeed, was the arena and an awful giant flesh warp <laughs> spawner. You'll never guess what I just saw. What was it? Exactly the monster that I didn't want to see. Oh, no. It's okay, Borbo. You tried. <laughs> I just want to be a helpful boy. You're always helpful, Borbo. You can be helpful by staying so cute and darling on top of my hat. <laughs> he does a little spin, and then he goes hiding back into stuff. <laughs> little thing. You know, he is, in fact, really good moral support here. Yes. Alright, there's this door, though, down this way. Well, let's, let's try go. our chances. Okay, go for it. All rank. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was advising the again. I need you to use your your roguish powers. <laughs> Not even a rogue. <laughs> Deeply the funniest thing you've ever done. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks probably fine. Although, again, a, a weird smell from the other side. Not as bad as before, but there is like the smell of like metal in the air. Interesting. Uh, it smells a little metallic. I would use the handkerchief, but it's not like. It's not as bad mm. as before. Okay. I will be careful. Don't bring out the hanky, though. Just in case. Oh, I never put it down. I believe that. I would definitely would in this place. Uh, Fiore has a shield raised just in case. What is this place? Well, uh, bad news, Fiore. Torture chamber. Mm. Fiore makes the white person seeing another person on the street face. <laughs> the stone walls of this chamber appear to glisten with blood. An <laughs> Iron Maiden stands in one corner, while the other corner has a metal table bristling with nails. Um, there are weapons hanging from the walls. Um, some of them look pretty nasty. God, I hate this place. Oh, wait, there's an Iron Maiden? Yeah. Mm. Would you all like to make me a uh, society check, though? Sure. No. Ulric, you remember something. A quote from a little while ago. You'll find that much of the next level is not all pleasant, I'm afraid. Torture, experimentation, and even gambling. Well, when you find a torture chamber, you take my advice and check beneath the loose floor tile precisely four paces north and seven west of the fairest woman. <gasps> Ever onward, your exceptional uncle, Dr. Zacchaeus Wimifor Slumberstone V. Get digging, we need that. Digging? Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, Dr. Sakaeus' note. Uh, what was it? Four paces to the north and how many to the west? Seven west. Okay. And seven west of the fair lady. There should be a loose tile. Uh, oh. Okay. Um, let's Let's look. Okay, do you want to go check it out? Do you want to try? Yeah. Okay, who goes to that, who goes to the thing and tries doing those steps? I mean, if somebody tells Fiore where to go, he'll do it. You know, in that sort of like, how many paces? <laughs> where? <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, do you guys want to guide Fiore? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alric says, four north, then seven west. Okay... It's from the fairest lady, which, uh, you look around, there's an Iron Maiden? Fiore looks back at the others and is like, are you goddamn kidding me? <laughs> I, I I can't believe that these exist. They're so... Ugh. How many... They don't exist in the real world, but this is a world with dragons, so... <laughs> Fiore is not the biggest fan of torture, you'll find. No way. I know it's really no. hard to be able <laughs> to tell that. I know, it's, so, I know it's a weird character trait to have. Four north, seven west. Fiore, you pace, 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 pace. And you look down at the tile, and it is not loose. Uh, Fiore goes, and he goes to try and move the tile, and he's like, it's not loose. Break it. 
Yeah. I'm like afraid something's gonna come to life. Oh, it's a floor. Okay, well, when something comes to life, I'm blaming you. You wouldn't blame me, he bats his eyelashes. Alright, alright, stop looking at me with them big ol' eyes. Bats, bats, bats. Um, <laughs> Fiore, uh, takes, um, the, like, metal heel, or, or, hmm, uh, I think Fiore takes, let's see, <laughs> I think he, um, gingerly sheaths the Rosa Aurea and takes out his regular scimitar and is like, I don't really want to do anything that risky with this, um, and takes the, <laughs> like, the, uh, the handle part. And uh, the Rosa Aurea heats up in your hand what? as you're taking it away. Why? I just don't want to, I don't want to damage you. My mom would be really upset. And then it glows and its exterior changes color. What is happening? And it turns into cold iron. Hmm. What? Remember, it has the ability precious anodi anodization, which allows it to change the type of metal it's made for for brief periods. And cold iron is very hard to break. The sword's like, please, use me to smash. <laughs> you can't no one tell my no one tell my mom I did this. Okay. Bro said, no one tell my mom I did this, and he's gonna confess the minute he gets home. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't mean to do this. Uh, Fiore, do you want to try smash it open? Uh, yeah. He's like, please, 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 don't break. I'm gonna kill myself. <sighs> uh, there, you slam it down, and with a crack, the sword... No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> the, the tile breaks. There's nothing underneath it. Philly. There's nothing. <laughs> I just won that note. Said something about that time. I'm a liar. Weird. Would you all like to make me another society check? <laughs> Alric, you remember something else. Wait. When you were discussing with Chak Fem, the mummy, you were given a physical description of this enigmatic doctor, and he mentioned he was a halfling. Oh. So, four paces north, seven paces west. For a halfling, it's not quite as much as a, a human, huh? <laughs> Smart. Halfling, so... Oh, I guess that would be less. Cheeky. A little less than... yeah. Hmm. So, what would four paces north and seven west be? I guess... Two, and then three and a half? Two... yeah... All right, where should I? Back to the lady. Yep, one, same two, time. One, one, two, three. Right there. Any points? Here? I believe so. Uh, he tries to loosen it? Yes, this one pulls up. Oh, this one is loose. There's a little treasure chest underneath. <laughs> this, one, this one is loose. Come here, guys. Ooh. Now I feel bad for breaking the tile, but... It's a fucking torture chamber. This is a this is a torture chamber. It's okay. Right. Do you want to read it? Yes. Okay. Well, you read and it says, Dearest Charladora and Teoletta, what a curious development. You know how I just can't stand fiends generally. Remember the incident with old Colonel Cormorant? But these devils are, uh, aren't so bad as far as they go. They won't just jump straight to killing you if they think you can get something from you. And that, my dears, is basic economics. <laughs> Why, they're nearly civilized. <laughs> they my will, God. however, most likely get around to killing you at some point, so be ready for that. At least it's nice and warm down here. I'm sure you two enjoy the sauna on the arena level, despite the questionable company. Well, I left my oh, next man. letter in the warmest room down here, right under the circle. Why, I had a fine discussion with the devils in there about the tyranny behind extraplanar portals. That was before they got around to trying to kill me, of course, as I mentioned above. <laughs> I'm sure you'll enjoy meeting the boss devil. You always hear talk about heavenly choirs and angelic choruses and whatnot, but never you hear so much about infernal vocalists. What a charming voice that man has here. <laughs> now, it is just as I have always said. 
Never judge a sinister multi-level subterranean super complex by the squalid ruination of its uppermost level. <laughs> Ever onward, your evasive uncle, Dr. Zacchaeus Wimmerforce Slumberstone the Fifth. This guy went toe-to-toe -to -toe with devils? Oh my god, this well, is the most accomplished man I've ever heard of in my life. I have an attachment to him. He's like a father to me. <laughs> <laughs> a father I never had. It'd be really cool to have letters like this. <laughs> I know. It's just a, like, I, I can't believe he's gotten down this far. Me either. Honestly, I would have thought he would have died. A at this point, I feel like like, I want to meet him, but I'm also, like, really scared of meeting him. What if he doesn't live up to our expectations? That's kind of what I'm scared of. <laughs> what if he's an ass- what if he's an asshat in person? But then, I'm also like, uh, how could I not want to meet him? He sounds great. Truly. There are some treasures in this, though, if you'd like. Um, oh, yes. So, we start with two ghostly portal paints. Uh, these are paints that if you put them onto a wall, uh, you can basically turn a section of the wall incorporeal to a depth of 10 feet, allowing you to pass through it. Mm. Mm. And when this effect wears off, anything remaining within the portal is shunted to the nearest exit. Uh, you won't be able to bring ghost touch weapons through, though. So keep that in mind. Uh, because, unfortunately, uh, ghost touch is physical with incorporeal stuff, including this door. I see. That's pretty interesting, and a, yeah, like, that's like a very interesting like weakness. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, but on top of that, uh, you can get tree skeptics elixirs, which make you better at telling when someone's being a fuck ass liar to you. <laughs> uh, it gives you an item bonus to perception checks uh, for t ten minutes, and this applies to spoken lies and written deceit. Hmm. And you get a bonus to will saves as well for the duration. Might be helpful if you're going up to anyone you suspect might be a liar. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll find a time for that. Who wants what? You can all get one skeptic's elixir at least. Yeah. Yeah. One each. That'd be useful. And who wants the, the portal paint? I kind of want it. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I think that's more up Silk Alley. <laughs> well, there's two of them. Does Silk want a whole boat? You certainly can. <laughs> Would either of you want one of these, or should I hold on to both of them? I'm well. I'm not against having magic items or anything, but um, I don't really use them that much unless they're actively related to my thing. So I don't need it or anything. Okay. Mm. Whoa! So you put that in your bag, and immediately you slump. <gasps> Too heavy. Oh. <laughs> you okay? My pack is so heavy. Do you want to reorganize? <laughs> well... Maybe you stop fucking carrying the Whispering Reeds everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Guys, someone who's good at budgeting, please tell me what to do! <laughs> no, I've got shut up. <laughs> a bulk light pistol, a bulk negligible perfect droplet, <laughs> a bulk two Whispering Reeds! Oh my god, it's heavy! <laughs> it's bulk two? Yeah! Damn, that's one big book. <laughs> he he's like he's like slumped on the ground with his pack and he's like Well, I mean, if I mean if two rocket handsome men <laughs> Are you trying uh, to charm me into carrying your stuff? I mean you have the muscle. Hold on. Arik <laughs> <laughs> oh. is looking Arik is actively looking in his back to see if he can carry anything else. <laughs> uh, great news. Yes, you can, because uh, you got so much that was not in your bag of holding. Okay. That's <laughs> so like... funny. <laughs> okay, let me see what I can carry. Thank you. What do you give to Alric and to Fiore? Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> How much can uh, Alric carry? <laughs> Two bulk left. Fiore? Three bulk left. Yeah. Okay, don't get mad that I have this on me, but... <gasps> yeah? <laughs> he takes out the Whispering Greeds. Why do you have that? I feel like Ulrich we should broach this topic looks... on another day. What do you mean? 
Alric doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but he's looking at the book like he's looked at the book and looks at Silk. Like, is this maybe not a keep it? it at home item? Okay. Hold I just on. want to say it has some devastatingly strong powers that you should use yeah. all the time. Yeah, it could very much come in handy. Yeah, well, you need to start lifting if you're gonna do all that. But I'll lose my charm and my beauty if I do. You can just get stronger without becoming... <laughs> like, I'm not that bulky. Look, Fiore, this girlish figure doesn't come from doing hard work. <laughs> you, you, oh, I don't even know what to, <laughs> what to say to that. <laughs> Fiore immediately becomes so horny he passes out. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so mean? <laughs> Who's oh. holding on to the whispering fucking reeds? I don't know why you're holding on to this. I'll leave it at home next time, I promise. Okay, I believe that. <laughs> Silk says, lying. <laughs> Fiora, do you want to hold it? Yeah, he can hold on to it. He's not afraid of it or anything. <laughs> you touch it and you feel a great evil pass through you. Why do you carry something that ha that feels like there's evil, that it's made of evil? Magic doesn't especially dictate your alignment. Not always. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, ha like, it I, it feels like, like there's evil touching me. That's disgusting. Sometimes really powerful magic comes from a very dark past. What? What are you doing? What are you, what are you learn in that college? <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, as we move on through the dungeon, how should we go about He's it? He's looking at Ulrich like, I'm really scared of higher education now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what is happening? What are they teaching? <laughs> what are they teaching him at that liberal school? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you guys want to go? Out of this fucking torture chamber. Yeah, get the fuck out. Now you just have to decide... Do you want to make your way into the arena, or are you deciding to go the long way around? Let's go the fucking long way around! <laughs> yeah. He can't trick us into having an encounter. <laughs> <laughs> he can't trick yeah, fuck us! fuck you. Okay. So, the tree of you begin the... Wait, let me check how long this walk's gonna be. Oh, this is mad funny. 450. Oh my god, the tree of you begin the 500 feet walk ah. to the stairway on the other side of the dungeon, slowly but surely creeping your way through the darkness and honing in on Jafaki, wherever he may be. You will certainly find him sooner rather than later. This episode of Dice Will Roll would not have been possible without the support of our patrons. Roxy, Cell Ravau, The Protease Inhibitor, Acid Dialogue, River Sports Artists, 100 Gex Official, Horror Fan, Lightning Scar, Dr. Caesar ND, A Potato, Derpy Gamer, Quinlan Boss, Princess Alavi, Emily is Gay, Meow Mai, Abigail Wallet, Knight the Werewolf Teacher, Actually a Bot, Violet, Kyle Damon, Soul Gris Lobo, Phoebe Jeebies, Lux Rexus, Baron Stormcrow, Tony Saunders, Mita, Arave, Mothstack Crawls, Ferric Falcon, Luis Loza, Ares, Alexander Krizzle, Skyly, Jim Lee Tripped, Transgirl Trish, Baal Punyon, Matthew Wilson Krasnovich, Tillin Shark, Jace Snooks, Jonathan Love, G Barbera, Luke, Gideon, Simon Strange, Seth, Kira, Litchlow, Gizno, Cass, Thale McElduff, Ava, Rem T. Bright, Lonesome Chunk, Steph, Sean C, Natasha Lumley, Rhiannon C, Ellie, Jenna Mitchell, Kane Kendrick, Sky Evangeline, Triceratops, 
Anna Maria, Jordan, Enlil Derna, John DeBookworder, SS66Seeker, and Dane Wagner Tur. If you'd like to see what you can get for helping us keep it rolling, check out patreon.com slash dice roll today. Every hero strikes out on their adventure for a different reason. To prove myself worthy of my mother's praise. To write my own story and discover who I really am. To prove to my family that I am more than they believe me to be. To avoid the god that has chosen me. But when the fragile balance of the world is in jeopardy, and sinister forces move in the darkness, heroes will be tested, pushed to their limits and beyond. And it will be left to them to determine if they are up to the task. There is a darkness rising. Will they be able to overcome the challenges and meet this evil head on? For my god. For my story. For my freedom. For the world. To restore the balance. Modified Role Season 2 The Chronicles of Eren. A DD 5e actual play podcast. New season, new characters, new story. Find us on all the usual podcasting apps or at modifiedroll.com.